Live from the Ball State News Center, this is News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome to News Link Indiana. I'm Ashley Lahue. And I'm Travis Robinson. Thanks for joining us. A county commissioner is looking at a Muncie Middle School that's no longer filling its classrooms with students, but possibly with inmates. Reporter Katie McPherson has more on the story. Well, it's a middle school locked its doors late last June. County Commissioner James King has a new vision as to what to do with this abandoned building. His vision? Well, it's to turn it into a new county jail. County Commissioner James King plans to move the courts, jail, and animal control all into one building. He says the current jail has issues that can't be fixed. The jail that we have now, you can't build up, you can't build out. Uh, I don't know why anybody would have built a triangle jail in the first place. Uh, it wasn't built in the manner it should have been built. Uh, with Wilson, we can take it and we can build a proper jail that we actually need. Wilson Middle School would be able to hold 500 beds. That is double the amount the current county jail can hold. Criminal justice professor Mike Brown says this could cause more people to be put behind bars. Research shows that if you've got empty beds, the courts will use them. And that's an important consideration. So expenses actually can increase because there are jail beds to fill. King says moving the jail could cost taxpayers, could save taxpayers thousands of dollars. One of his biggest challenges was going to be to get the okay from surrounding neighborhoods. Reporting live, Newslink Indiana, Katie McPherson, Newslink Indiana. Thanks, Katie. The public can voice their concerns at local public hearings throughout the year. King still has to go through the Muncie City Council before any immediate change will happen to Wilson Middle School. The second I-STEP computer stress test ran today. In West Lafayette School Corporation Superintendent Rocky Killian said it was a complete disaster. The stress test is meant to ensure the online portion of ISTEP works perfectly before it is given to more than 450,000 students this April. 27,000 kids could not take the exam in 2013 when a similar issue occurred. ISTEP results play a large role in school grading and teachers' pay. The village has long been known for its locally owned bars, but change like trains like Brothers and others are giving businesses a run for their money. We go to the Ivan House for the story. I'm down here in the village where the future of the local bar and music venue be here now is uncertain. The trust for the building has gone up for sale, and if a buyer buys the building, be here now can't be forced to leave. Junior speed pathology major John Liette believes Be Here Now is one of those places that keeps the village special. Uh, I kind of feel like uh, the village is losing something special. I know I've never really been to Be Here Now, but I feel like it's just something that's very special to Ball State and the village in general. Liette also believes that the local bars in the village are one thing that make it stand out compared to other schools in the state. We lose those bars and we lose the village and the village is something that makes Ball State just special over other colleges in Indiana. Ball State alum Daniel Ramos also believes that the locally owned bars in the village keep it special and that customers should keep going to them. Definitely, definitely. It's part of the culture of Muncie. It's part of Muncie culture. I feel like uh, we either like support like uh, like local businesses or not. Senior Durham Don Tomsetti Please be here now is important for the village because of what it has to offer. But right now I do see a good crowd going to be here now because of its music. The music there is really great. Um, it's the only music bar with a lot of bands showing up to Ball State. Other village bars like Cleo's, the Lots, and the Chug remain open. For Newslink Indiana, I have Evan House reporting. For more information on the village, go to ballstatedaily.com. With most college students on a budget, not everyone chooses to make an extravagant plan for Valentine's Day, or even plans at all. Reporter Adriana Jones went to Woodworth to ask students what they plan to do instead. I'm here in front of Woodworth right now, and I came to ask students what they may or may not have plans for this Valentine's Day weekend, and this is what they had to say. Um, because there's going to be a lot of people up like for Valentine's Day, like at dinner and stuff like that, and we don't really like people. <laughs> 
or something on Friday night and then kind of hang out at home. I, I think it's kind of like an overrated holiday, in my opinion. Uh, not that it's like too much money, but I don't know, like it's really high expectations, I guess. For those students who would like to do something for Valentine's Day this weekend, there's plenty of things going on in the city. Like, for example, Scotty's Brew House and Texas Row House are offering Valentine's Day specials. And places like the movie theaters and Muncie, Showplace 12, they're offering $5 before 6 p.m. for all their movies. And lastly, maybe if you have a slightly higher budget, Andrews Jewelers is offering 75% off all their jewelry. And that's all I have. I'm Adriana Jones in Muncie, Newslink, Indiana. Thanks, Adriana. And if you're still looking for ideas for that special someone, be sure to check out an article in the Daily News about your perfect Valentine's Day date. Now, I'm not really doing anything for Valentine's Day this year, so I don't really need to worry about the weather conditions. How about you? I'm definitely planning on going out. Jacqueline, how much will I need to bundle up? <laughs> well, we aren't going to be seeing those warm temperatures heating up for Valentine's Day. But right now, here in Muncie and the surrounding areas, we are looking at about 20 degrees. That wind chill is really affecting us. If we look, we see those temperatures here in Muncie. Uh, with the wind chill, it's about 6 degrees. Fort Wayne, very similar. As it feels about 7 degrees there with that wind blowing from the north-northeast at about 20 miles per hour. Down south, a little bit warmer. The wind not affecting them so much as Bloomington sits at about 10 degrees, it feels like there. Coming up on the full forecast, we'll talk if these cold temperatures are here to stay. We'll get that Valentine's weekend weather forecast, and I will have your full seven-day forecast coming up. Yesterday, Newslink Indiana previewed the second harvest tailgate that takes place twice a month to help those in need. This morning, Newslink Indiana reporter Mackenzie Clark was at the event. Muncie temperatures forecasted at 20 and 19 degrees really felt like zero and negative one this morning due to 20 to 24 mile per hour winds. Cars lined up late last night just to be sure to save a spot in line today. With winds that could make anyone want to stay inside, volunteers at the Second Harvest Food Bank are taking their time this morning volunteering to provide food to those in need. Not too bad. <laughs> Kind of cold. The volunteers have to stand outside for two hours or at least until the truck is unloaded and all the food is gone. Jacqueline Ray has volunteered at the Delaware County tailgate two times now. It's cold, but it's okay. We're helping people out. Being unemployed, she hopes people would do the same for her. Why, why not just go ahead and give back to the community when they've given to me? So I know that I'm going to get blessed at the end of it. Second Harvest plans for 700 cars and holds the event for two hours. Although sometimes more people show up and food runs out. The tailgate takes place twice a month and cold or no cold, people will be there with a smile on their face, ready to help. Have a day. We'll In Buncee, Mackenzie Clark, Newslink, Indiana. Thanks, Mackenzie. Second Harvest encourages all at the tailgate and those who need help to find a local food pantry in the area. Better ingredients, better pizza, and higher profile orders. A Papa John's driver made a special delivery to the rapper Iggy Azalea, but Azalea claimed that shortly after the de delivery to her California home, she received text messages from the driver's brother. Azalea took to Twitter after a call to Papa John's didn't fix anything. Although Azalea did claim that Papa John's is her favorite pizza, reports say that there could be a lawsuit in the future and that Azalea would have one less problem without him. Next after the break, is social media helping to get rid of potholes? And take a look at how North Carolina is reacting to the murders of three students. Pretty much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Uh, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Start a new chat. What did I do? Okay. Wow. That is so weird. Hey! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh. Hi! Hi. 
God, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so nervous. Gia, you're so big. Come closer to the camera. <laughs> Wait, now you're in my face. That was so good. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me treats. Enroll. The new world of healthcare is here to stay. Do something for those who care about you. Enroll today. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. From the Ball State News Center, you're watching News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome back. Potholes are reappearing on the streets of Muncie. Newslink reporter Cameron Christian has an update on how you can fix them from the comfort of your own home. There we go. Stand by. Potholes are a problem this time of year all across Indiana. But in Muncie, that can change with a simple tweet. It's been about a year since the Twitter page for potholes in Muncie has been established. Muncie Potholes, a Twitter page for residents of the community to tweet where potholes are in the city, offers those residents a quick way of letting the street department know. Donnie Wright, supervisor of the Department of Public Works in Muncie, says they get about six reports in a day. We normally get about at least six, six a day that come in. Um, it's definitely the new updated, you know, from calling in, you know, it's easier just to take the time, everybody uses it, uh, to just, just tweet it. Within the one year Muncie Potholes has been on Twitter, it has expanded from just the use of Muncie residents to the students at Ball State as well. Uh, we, we, get, we have Ball State students that uh, use it. We have uh, uh, citizen, you know, the citizens of Muncie that uh, are out there. <clears throat> they, uh, they, they all use it. You know, it's, it's really not one more than the other. Wright says that the Twitter page helps them remember where exactly the potholes are and also helps with the immediacy of fixing the problems. For all updates regarding safety on the streets, follow Muncie Potholes on Twitter and like them on Facebook. Go. This sample of a pothole can be found at the corner of Deal and Ashland. Now that's where you come in. You can tweet Muncie Potholes using your smart device and tell them what the issue is. They'll get back to it as soon as they can. Live in Muncie, Cameron Christian, Newslick, Indiana. Thanks, Cameron. Again, Muncie residents can follow Muncie Potholes on Twitter. The U.S. Senate confirmed that, that Ashton Carter is the next Secretary of Defense today. Carter will be replacing Chuck Hagel and will be the 25th person to serve the position. The 60-year-old was previously the number two man at the Pentagon, serving as Deputy Secretary. He first joined the department in, 18, in 1981 under President Reagan after winning unanimous support earlier this week from the Armed Services Committee. The Senate voted him in by a count of 93 to 5. The police investigation of the murder of three students at the University of North Carolina is still ongoing. Chapel Hill police say that an argument over a parking space may have caused the shootings. The students were fatally shot in an apartment near the, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill's campus on Tuesday. A suspect is in custody after turning himself in late, night, late Tuesday night. There was a moment of silence for the three students at the North Carolina State versus University of Virginia basketball game Wednesday and funeral services were held on Thursday. Chapel Hill's police chief says that his department will exhaust every lead to determine a motive. 
Facebook announced a new policy for deceased users. They are now able to designate a legacy contact to take over their account after they die. Legacy contacts will be able to update cover photos and profiles, respond to friend requests, and archive posts and photos. After someone has died, Facebook friends can report electronically a death on Facebook and they will add the tagline remembering over the user's name. In order to update your legacy contact, go to settings tab on your Facebook. And stay tuned to find out how to dress for your Valentine's Day date. And see how the cold might affect your weekend. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. We finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Well, I was really surprised to wake up and see a little snow on the ground, and I heard a rumor that more might be headed our way. Oh, well, that's just not allowed. Let's toss it over to Jacqueline over at the weather to see how it's going to turn out. Yes, guys, unfortunately, many of us woke up to a fresh blanket of snow in Muncie today. Right now, we are currently sitting at about 20 degrees in Muncie and the surrounding area, but the story is those winds coming out of the north and northwest at about 16 miles per hour, dropping the temperature, so it feels like it's about 6 degrees. The upper Midwest and Northeast is facing a little bit of an Arctic blast at the moment. Minneapolis only sitting at about 9 degrees. If you want to warm up, though, head out west where Los Angeles is sitting at about 82 degrees. Las Vegas at about 73. Weather's around the local area. Muncie, warmer than everyone else right now. We are sitting at about 20 degrees. Fort Wayne a little bit colder up north at 7. Head down south. Warms up a little bit, but Muncie is the warmest in the area at the moment. Looking at our local radar, nothing, not much action uh, in the surrounding area. Scan out, looking at all of Indiana again. Nothing we really have to worry about. Some snow showers potentially up north in the northwest, but nothing that's going to affect our area anytime soon. Looking at the precision cast, we see that Friday morning, not a lot of cloud cover in the area. But as we get into Friday night, Friday evening, we will see those clouds move into the area. They'll stick around until about Saturday evening late into the night tonight though we will have mostly clear skies as that wind dies down to only about three miles per hour temperature will bottom out at about 18 so it won't be too bad tomorrow though very similar as it was today you wake up tomorrow morning you're going to be looking at about 10 degrees partly cloudy skies as we go throughout the day though those temperatures will warm up but the clouds are going to come over going to cool us down a little bit so we won't be getting as much sun your Valentine's Day weekend, you will likely see snow and looking ahead until the weekend, the seven day forecast, as we can see here, sticking at about the mid 20s, um, but we will see some drops in temperatures on Sunday at 14 degrees and Wednesday you'll hit about 15.
As you could tell from before, I'm not really too excited about the snow tomorrow. <laughs> no one is. <laughs> well, coming up next, we'll see that a Ball State running back has been invited to the Combine. And later, we'll get feedback on the late Dean Smith. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. From the Ball State Gosh, News Center, you're watching News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome back to News Link Indiana. I'm Joe Rushka. Men's basketball takes on the Bowling Green Falcons tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. in Worthen Arena. After starting the season 7-6, the Cardinals have lost the last nine, while the Falcons are 16-6 overall with a three-game winning streak. With the season winding down, this is one of the last opportunities to go out and cheer on your Cardinals. Ball State's very own Juwan Edwards has been invited to the NFL Combine that, bring, that begins on February 21st. Edwards rushed for over 4,500 yards in his career, becoming Ball State's leading rusher while also scoring 51 touchdowns. Edwards is also one of nine players from the MAC Conference to be invited to the Combine. NFLDraftScout.com has Edwards ranked as the 29th best running back in this year's draft. Legendary University of North Carolina basketball coach Dean Smith died last weekend. His life and career influenced generations of coaches and fans. Muncie Burst head co varsity basketball coach Joe Anderson says he uses Smith's coaching philosophies for his team. I'm probably more of an intense coach, but the thing that I like what Dean Smith did was he really cared about his players. He put his players first. You know, when you look at his graduation rate, you know, he had one of the highest graduation rates, I think over 90%. So that, that speaks volumes. And you look at the players that have come through there, He's had a lot of talent. Um, some of those players were some of the greatest players to ever play the game, but the one thing they did, they went back, even if they left early, they did go back to get their degree. Mm -hmm. Cody Short is a junior accounting major at Ball State and has been following North Carolina basketball from an early age. Um, I really, really became a fan young when they had Sean May and that team there that won the national championship. And then since then, I've been a pretty big follower of them. Smith's ego did not get in the way of his coaching. Like hearing stories and uh, seeing some highlights of him, he's a really good man first, I believe, and like a coach second, and he like was always uh, trying to do whatever was best for his players, even if it wasn't like the biggest benefit for him. Dean Smith finished his coaching career with 879 wins, 11 Final Four appearances, and two national championships. Smith was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1983 and the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2006. Thanks, Joe. That's too bad about the coach. Yeah. 
Well, after the break, if you're a blue collar man with too much time on your hands, come sail away with sticks. And later, see how a girl fills Peter Pan's shoes. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up so every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? From the Ball State News Center, you're watching News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome back. I'm Brianna Ringo with your entertainment news. The magical story of Peter Pan about a boy who never wanted to grow up is coming to Muncie Sylvie Theater this Friday. Being Peter Pan is not easy when you're a girl. Maggie Williams, who plays Peter Pan, tells how she prepared for the role. For me, it was just learning not to be so girly. Uh, of course, playing a young boy is very different from being uh, a young woman. And the, the physicality, the walking, the sort of deeper placement in speaking and singing. Music director Michael Williamson tells why they brought Peter Pan to the Sylvic Theater. I think it's really important for a person at any stage in their lives to really enjoy having fun and as they develop and grow through their lives, always to keep that fun spirit and that playful spirit. So I, I think it's really fun for us you know, from that point of view. Ball State plays a huge role in the play as well. How you may ask? Director of Peter Pan, Laura Williamson, says a lot of her characters come from Ball State. Especially working with a lot of Ball State students that I haven't uh, known before. So. Uh, um, Almost all the Lost Boys One, and Pirates two. and Natives are Ball State okay. students. Captain Hook is a Ball State director. Tomorrow night, the story comes alive at 7.30 with a huge cast to bring the house down. Tickets can be purchased online at MuncieSilvic.org. Tango! The 80s rock band Styx, popular for its songs Lady and The Best of Times, will be performing in Emmons Auditorium tomorrow night at 8. The band has landed 40 top 100 hits in the U.S., and they plan on making every show better than their last. For the last minute rockers out there, tickets are still on sale online, ranging in price from $40 to $100. That's all for entertainment news tonight. Thanks. Well, hopefully that concert will be not snowed out. How about a final look at weather? Well, you don't have to worry about snow rolling in tomorrow night. We should be good, but it might be possible we see some snow on Valentine's Day while those weathers stay cold. You see on Valentine's Day, we will be looking at roughly 19 degrees with snow very likely throughout the day. We may accumulate around one to three inches with those winds coming out the south to southwest at 12 miles per hour. We'll see similar temperatures throughout the rest of the week in to next with some drops in temperature periodically throughout maybe on Sunday we, we might drop a little bit lower to around 14 degrees. Thanks Jacqueline. That's all we have for tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great night.